buses that are going to surprise location or whatever. Yeah. To, to, to me, that has less to do with uh, setting your location than it has to do with subterfuge. They, the Romney campaign decided that if they announced publicly that he was going to invent a cylindra, particularly in the Bay Area, which if I remember correctly, tends to lean slightly leftward, huh. the possibility of anti-Romney protesters is considerable. So, um, you never like a campaign that has to, you, know, you never like to be a campaign that has to sneak around like that. But in order to have the visual without the who being protesters rather than supporters, I don't know that it changes the uh, trajectory of the campaign at all. But not a, not a bad thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk when. The when comes in two categories. Number one, what the days of the week, and number two, what time of day. Um, first of all, when it comes to a day for announcing news, you want to announce news on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, does anyone want to guess why you might not want to announce news on a Friday? Why would a Friday be a bad day to announce news? I'm oh, sorry? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Normal, going back to the conversation we had at the very beginning of these classes. Normal people stop paying attention or pay a lot less attention to, uh, to the news come Friday night and Saturday. Why? Because they're not working on a campaign like we are. And they have lights. They finish their, they finish their work for the week. It's 5 o'clock on a Friday. They slide down the dinosaur sail and tail and they're done until Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And human nature is such that once you finish that work week, you're going to pay less attention to the news over the weekend. Now you guys being the intellectuals that you are. You might say, I'm not going to see my students for another two and a half days. Now is the time to spend a lot of time reading the newspaper. But most weeks, don't you just want to get away from all that? Just like normal people do. So it's not a coincidence that the Friday and Saturday night evening newscasts and the Saturday morning newspapers have the smallest news audiences of the week. Um, the type of a similarly, on, similarly online. The type of online traffic that goes up on weekend is not the kind of thing that I think the program's organizers would like me to talk about in here. So let's just agree that news about politics and public policy and government, those are web websites that are less visited on weekend. Websites that are more visited, well, no comment. <laughs> um, so we don't want to announce news on a Friday because we're going to have a smaller news audience. Even if our news gets covered, there's going to be less people to read or to watch it. And the reason not to announce on a Monday, and I'm not going to get too, into too much detail here, but part of making life convenient for reporters, part of making it as easy as possible for them to cover our campaign, is to let them know in advance when we're going to be making this. And generally what I will do is I will let reporters know, either by email or text or by phone, one week before I'm making an announcement. I'll remind them one day before that announcement. And then I'll remind them finally the morning of that announcement. If I'm making an announcement on a Monday, that means I'm reminding them on Friday. And giving them 72 hours to forget about my reminder rather than 24 hours is a big risk on my part. Once again, reporters are people. If I tell you something on a Friday at 4.55, you go out Friday night and you pound lemonades or whatever your plan is for Friday night. By the time you come back on Monday morning, the chances you remember what we talk about on Friday afternoon are a lot less than if I simply told you the evening before. So for no other reason than just to make sure that this doesn't slip through the cracks with the reporters I'm trying to get to cover me, I don't want to start on a Monday. I'm going to have to remind them too far in advance. So that leaves midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for announcing news. As far as time of day, we know that most print reporters' deadlines come at about 5 p.m. <coughs> we know that online reporters can post throughout the day, so the timing for them is not quite as relevant. And on the off chance that you think you're going to attract television coverage, their deadlines are usually early to mid-afternoon for the evening news program. And so because we're making life as easy as possible, as convenient as possible for reporters, we want to give them as much time as possible before their deadline to put together a story. If you've got a 5 o'clock deadline and I give you the news at 4 o'clock, well, 
of putting you in a pretty uncomfortable and inconvenient position. So by that token, I guess I should hold my news conferences at 6, 7 a.m., right? No, why not? I'm sorry? Are they, are they awake or are they ready to get? Oh, most normal people not working on campaigns or in schools are not at work by 7 o'clock. And once again, we want to be able to remind them the morning of the announcement that it is taking place. So generally, I would say midday, 11 a.m. or so, by the optimum time for a news announcement. That way, if a reporter has follow-up questions, they can contact you. And that also, if you're a really effective campaign, you don't wait for them to contact you with follow-up questions. You call them. I made my announcement either in a news conference or individually at 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I try to make a round of calls or send a round of emails or text to reporters mid-afternoon, 2.30 to 3, saying, hey, do you need anything else for your story? Just by, pro, you know, just by prodding them a little bit, I might get them to ask a question for clarification. I might get them to, uh, uh, they say, oh, your opponent said this in response. Is that accurate? Just reminding just poking them a little bit. Gives you one more chance at them. So 11 a.m. or so, midday, midweek, is the optimum time for announcing news, at least announcing positive news. Now what happens if you have bad news to announce? Well, then you turn this all on its head. You want to announce, you bet, Friday, when? <laughs> Friday around 5 o'clock, exactly right. Um, the best example I ever saw of this, and I say this with gen only the genuine admiration that, he, that a cynical political hat can muster. I remember when Bill Clinton was running for re-election, he announced that he was signing the Defense of Marriage Act, legislation passed by Congress that outlawed same-sex marriage in this country. And the White House announced at 11.30 p.m. on a Friday night, yeah. that the president had signed that bill. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was not a public signing with location and setting and backdrop and surrogates. If you know that there's going to be a smaller news audience on a Friday night or a Saturday, if you know that a story uh, announced close to the reporter's deadline is going to get less attention, then when you do have unflattering news to announce, then you reverse these uh, then you reverse these polls. Uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, particularly ugly news. And if I remember correctly, it's been about a decade, a little more than a decade now, but there was actually a government employee, and I do not remember what level of government, there was a government public relations specialist fired in September of 2001, because he or she had suggested on September 11, 2001, that their agency announced some particularly bad news because they knew it was not going to get coverage that day. And they made the tactical error of putting that suggestion in writing. And when it came out that a professional public relations specialist was going to use the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 